thank you for coming part for part C of lecture number 14. We're making them shorter. People were saying that if they were shorter, that would be good. So we're doing it. Okay, so this is our next example. Find the minimum maximum of the function z equals x squared plus y squared minus xy minus 3x in the region bound by the line x is a minus 2 y a minus 1 y also at 5 minus x okay so we have here Our equation and the plane that this is lying in. And we want to find our maximums and minimums within certain boundaries. Now remember I mentioned to you that the endpoints where the constraints are are sometimes our max and minimum. Keep that in mind. Now our first equation is we're going to take the partial of z in respect to x. M, we're going to be looking at 2x. So we see here if we take the derivative of with respect to x, we get 2x minus y minus 3, which is 0. Then we take it in respect to our y. Okay, when we take it with respect to our y, We will find that that's equal to 2y minus x equals 0. So if we solve for x in respect to y, we see x equals 2y. So now if we can plug this into equation 1, You see here, we can get 3y equals 3. That means what? y equals 1. And if y equals 1, then when we plug it back into this equation, x equals 2. So now we have one of our points, 2 can see x, 2, and 1. So we see that that is a minimum. We see that that is a point in our graph. But now we got to also look at the boundary points. Okay, so we found a minimum in that respect. Now we're looking at the boundary point. Okay, so for the boundary, for x equal a negative 2, we're going to plug that back into our equation. And then we get 4 plus y squared plus 2y plus 6. Then we take the partial with respect to y. We get 2x. 
us too. So here we see that what? Y equals a negative 1 when X equals a minus 2. So we have a minus 2 minus 1, another point on our boundaries. Now let's look at for y equal a negative 1. Plug it back into our equation. And we get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, now let's take the partial in respect to x. So then we get a 2x. Minus 2. Two x minus two equals zero. Okay, so now we have what? X equals one. So when y equals a negative one, x equals one. So that's our next point. Do it again. Is up finding our boundaries. Okay, we have y is equal to five minus x. Take that and plug it back into our original equation. And we'll come up with 3x squared minus 18x plus 5. And at this point, what we can do Here we take the derivative of this. We get 6 minus 18 equals 0. We solve for x. x equals 3. So now we have another point. So if we plug in 3 for x here, 5 minus 3 equals 2, so our y equals 2. So let's check these conditions. Okay? Z equals y squared plus x squared plus y squared minus xy minus 3. So if we use the conditions that we had, the corners conditions, the other two conditions that we had. I think we come up with around six points. Okay, we see that z at 2, 1, we plug that in, that's equals a minus 3. We also look at the point at z at minus 2, minus 1, that comes up with 9. We see that we have z at 1 and minus 1, and we get 0. We use also um, Z at 3, 2, we see that's a minus 2. We see Z at minus 2, minus 1. That also gives us a 9, so we have two 9s. But as you can see, that's for the same point. Also, we have um, Z at minus 2, 7, which equals 73, which is pretty large. And we have Z at 6 and a minus 1 and we get a 25. So we can see we have our maximum at where? At 73 at the point z at minus 2, 7. And we have our minimum at 
which is our minus 3. We have that at z at 2, 1. So this is how we find our maximum minimum. Okay? So now that you've seen how to do that, we're going to have you do the same thing with limits again. Okay? Boundaries. Okay? And these problems we'll be going over in class. We'll do that. At the end, when you finish with solving this problem, it's going to look like this. So you're going to find that you have your high points here and your low points, your cool points on this end. As you can see, as it's more blue, it's less deep. And as you get closer to the red and higher, you get positive solution. Okay. All right, so here you see we have another function. As you can see, we have this saddle. So we talked about a saddle point, okay? As you can see, they have all of these different dips in here. Okay, now which one is the min, which one is the max? Okay, as you can see here, you, just, you can use numerical tools. That's what we wind up eventually. You have all of these points here so that you can just figure that out. But graphically, it helps you to be able to determine where that point will be for your minimum and for your maximum using the numerical values. Okay. As you can see here, here's another numerical one. It has, it has two peaks here and two valleys here. And it, also, we want you to be able to find the uh, minimum distance from the origin to the hyperbola. Z squared equals 4 times x squared plus y squared minus 4y plus 8. Now, when you do this particular problem, you're going to come up with some complex numbers. If you come up with complex numbers, throw them out because they're no longer valid. You can't use a maximum minimum on um, invisible um, with imaginary terms and complex terms. Okay? So, thank you. All of these we will give you solutions to and we will go over them in class. Thank you, and have a nice day. We appreciate you being with us and spending your time with us for this duration 